Like many of you, we battled depression during life's ups and downs. Music has always been the one thing that we could rely on to get us through the tough times that we all face. Follow us on our journey as we discuss the healing power of music, interview bands, break down genres, review band biographies, and more. This is the When Words Fail Music Speaks Podcast with Blake Mosley and James Cox. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's J-A-C. Welcome to the When Words Fail Music Speaks Podcast, where we fight depression with the power of music. I am your professional handicapped host, James Cox. And no, I am not the voice of the scooter from the Muppets, but hey, that's life. Am I right? Uh, huh. Good, the good puns, man. You're good hitting them puns, with the puns man. right yeah. off the rip. That's great. <laughs> who, uh, are, who are you? Uh, well, I am barely keeping it together right now. Um, my life is a absolute chaotic mess. Um, but you can, uh, I'm also commonly referred to as, uh, the loudest guy in the room and, uh, the guy that's barely keeping it together when, uh, but only when I'm playing the drums, I am your endless source of useless music knowledge. My name is Blake Mosley, AKA Brosley. Um, and I am here to fly you to the moon, baby. Come on. Hey, fly me to the moon. Mm -hmm. All right. Take me uh, okay. off the rip. What is your, what is your absolute favorite Frank Sinatra song? My way. Come on now. You know what? Did it my my way. way. Um, starts right in the news of my second one. Yeah. Fly me to the moon is a uh, third. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I think those are his most popular songs ever. So I'm yeah. kind of like a, like a mark for those songs, you know? Yeah. But but I had a uh, I, I had a double a, a double vinyl set with Frank Sinatra's like the greatest hits of all time. You know, it's a double, yeah. set. and it and it was blue vinyl. But but I but I don't know what to do with it. You know. Uh, yeah. So I got to buy me a new one or something. You know. Okay. So, how about you? What are your what, what my, are your favorite, favorite songs? My favorite, for sure, hands down, favorite um, Frank Sinatra song uh, is that's life and that's, yeah. yeah uh and i will tell you it one for one reason like i had never heard the song until i played tony hawk's underground 2 um where that song was featured and uh i was just like there's a frank sinatra song in a tony hawk game this is the coolest thing in the entire world mm. that by far is my favorite soundtrack of any of the tony hawk games um there was johnny cash on there and i mean just it it was so cool such a diverse soundtrack um we talked about that in our tony hawk episode forever ago right. but yes my way uh or um, excuse me um that's life was that's on right. there and it's just i think okay so did you see the joker movie the one with joaquin yes i think i think that song's on it right yes that's, it is mm -hmm. at the end in the movie what while, while he's running away from the from the um crazy people Right. Security people, I think it's played played like that life. I think that is the song. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So, so yeah. uh, Mister Barely putting in, barely holding on. What's going on, man? Dude, I am like a constant ball of stress, and thank you all for bearing with my absence <laughs> recently, mm -hmm. James. Thanks for sticking sticking with me, man. I have been. It has been just nuts. I've been very busy. Um, I've also been very sick. There's a lot of uh, my allergies have been like driving me nuts here lately. Um, so if you hear some sniffling tonight, that's what's going on. So, um, but no, man, work work is is really stressful right now, to say the least. Um, we are in a really we're in a really bad spot, um, and it'll get better. It's just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. taking forever to get better so um i'm i'm sticking it out with where where i'm at and i think things are gonna be great once we can get to that point but right now it's just it's a lot yeah. so i'm constantly stressed out i've gone in early i've stayed late i've skipped multiple lunch breaks just because i've been so busy i'm basically doing three people's jobs right now oh have so, you have you eaten lunch at all during i've been eating oh, lunch okay. i've just had to skip taking a break i've, I've had to just like eat in my office and okay uh, 
Or just as um, long as eating, it's okay, you know. I'm still eating, yeah. I'm okay. still eating, but um, I'm trying to eat uh, as healthy as possible. Um, Allie and I are doing the E2M um, diet. I'm, I don't know if you've heard of that. It's this new diet trend, and it's worked pretty well. I've lost about uh, 10 or 15 pounds so far, so right. somewhere around there. So I'm at a comfortable weight. I think I'm, I'm like more a little more relaxed with, the the eating now because you know i'm good with that but that's been kind of stressful works you know work's been really busy church has been really busy um and i'm trying to balance it all and it's it's tough man if i can interrupt you for just one minute no okay so not at all (laughs) no how dare you darn it darn it darn it but uh when you said church it instantly reminded me to ask you this I think it's funny how one word or, or like a sentence can remind somebody. Hey, sure. well, today on Facebook, I saw a post that you posted. Yes, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> on TikTok. Okay, so yep. for people who don't know about this last year, sometime maybe, mm-hmm. he uh, he played the song Sugar We're Going Down. Sugar We're Going Down by yep. Fallout Boy yep. in church. He's a drummer for everybody who doesn't know, <laughs> and he and he did the intro into a a, a, a gospel song. I get you know I yeah, yeah. I, I presume. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when you recorded this, but today on Facebook I saw you did the My Hero intro. I haven't heard it. I have not heard it yet. But oh, you haven't um, watched the video? No, I have. I, well, because because I was I was at CC. Did you know that we had, that that Columbia has a CCs? I had no idea. No way. Do they yeah. really? Yeah, they Dude, got what a treasure. We haven't had a CCs here in many moons. It's been at least 10 yeah. years. Yeah, because I was telling my friend who, who um uh, who, who he and I went there, I was just like, damn, it's been like six, seven years since I've been there, you know? And I'm like, that's great. Uh, people, yeah, so. I need to dude, we gotta come over there and see you. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm going, going, going. Yeah. But uh, back to the story. Uh so Mr. Brosley did the introduction of my hero into a gospel song at this church. Yeah, so, tell us about um, it, please, because I because I yeah. am I because I I I have not heard it yet. So yeah, yes. So it and it wasn't the the intro. Um, it was it's the the it's how the drums are in um the chorus of my hero. So right, it built up. Yeah. Yeah, so it's that that drum part from the chorus of my hero. I felt that it it worked really with really uh, perfectly with the bridge of this song we were playing for Easter this past uh, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the time of this recording, yeah, Easter was this past Sunday. So um, I felt like it. I felt like it fit. I told I told I told the uh, worship leader um, Ben from church. I texted him. I was like, Hey man, uh, I've got this idea to throw. <laughs> my hero by the Foo Fighters into that song. And he was like, please do it. So I, all right, all right, all right. You know, all right. And then, um, a guy that, uh, obviously Allie's a big Foo Fighters fan as well. And then, um, uh, one of the guys that was playing guitar on church or mm-hmm. at church, uh, on this past Sunday is also a huge Foo Fighters fan. So I told him what I was going to do and he thought it was great. He tried to throw in some Foo Fighters esque, uh, guitar riffs in there as well. So, yeah. um, cause you know, Taylor Hawkins and his untimely passing kind of hit us all like, you know, just really hard. It's really, yeah. Yeah. When there's a, when there's a musician or any, you know, any celebrity that you admire and that you've looked up to for so long that passes away, especially so suddenly, um, it, it, it sucks, man. And I, I didn't know him personally. I wasn't friends with the guy. But you know, I was a big fan of his, so that, that that type of stuff hits me differently because music means so much to me. And uh, his his passing is something that um, is going to absolutely rock. It already has, but absolutely rock the music world. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there is a definite hole uh, that has been left with his passing. And poor Dave Grohl, man, I just yeah. I feel for that guy, but. Um, But yeah, I wanted to uh, pay tribute in a way to Taylor Hawkins. So I threw the 
uh, the drums from my hero into the song that we played at church on Sunday. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> and maybe oh. I'll strike gold again and I'll make yes. another, I'll get a, a few more 50,000 uh, views on the old TikTok, And then, and then maybe 50, I can quit my more. Job and, and not have to be stressed out all the time. There you go. And you and podcast it, and be a TikTok drummer and just, yeah. TikTok. That would be a new profession for everybody. TikTok drummers, you know, cause we got these, all these TikTok instrument models and, you you started already. Look at you. Well, we'll TikTok see. TikTok commerce. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah. But I do want to say at the top of this episode, um, a big congrats to Darren Marler from the Weird Darkness podcast, who actually did quit his day job um nice. in, to be able to do the Weird Darkness podcast. And um, he also does like voiceover work. Um, so yeah. and he does like audiobooks and things like that. So um, yeah, he said that he quit his, um, his day job and he's going to be doing this professionally. So huge congrats. That's amazing. Um, and so a huge see, inspiration to us all for sure. So see podcasting can be a business if you do it right. That's right. So Keep that's that what, that's, what, that's our dreams, you know, instead of yep. working nine that's to five. Dream. Hey man, interviewing guests and talking music with you is, is, uh, something to look forward to. So. No doubt, good sir. No doubt. Uh, before we go on any further, I want you to tell me about Beartooth and what to expect. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to see The Devil Wears Prada, not the movie. Not the movie, the band. I'm the band, the awesome band, and Beartooth is headlining. So I just want to know what can I expect from Bear Because I've never seen The Devil Wears Prada or Beartooth. So, yes. I don't know what I'm going to going to witness here so if you've well, seen them before or like you know because i know you're a big fan of both bands i am a huge fan of both of those bands um right. and you know caleb shomo lead singer of Beartooth. uh i have been a big fan of his before Beartooth. um he was the uh the lead singer of attack attack mm -hmm. um okay for, he actually started out as the uh like synth guy for attack attack and then whenever um Oh man, uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't remember his name. Austin Carlisle. Austin Carlisle, who was the original singer. I'm sorry. Let me let me go down this rabbit hole. Austin Carlisle was the original singer for Attack Attack. Mm. Caleb Shomo was in Ta Attack Attack, but he played the synth. Um, Austin Carlisle left um, or got kicked out or something. Yeah. Uh, then he started of Mice and Men. Uh, yeah. Caleb Shomo great took too, a yeah. great band. Yep, another great band. Um, he's no longer with them either, but you know, uh, we'll have to do a live uh, on him. That yeah, dude is just full uh, of drama. It happened, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, sounds yeah. like it. <laughs> yeah, but Caleb Shomo took over lead vocals for Attack Attack. They continued on for like two more albums. Um, and I really liked that era. Um, mm -hmm. and then they split up. Caleb Shomo announced that he was starting a new band that was a little bit more on the hardcore side and not so much the screamo stuff mm. um, and uh, really fast like punk beats and things like that. And it was a it was a breath of fresh air in a time when that type of music definitely needed it. Beartooth didn't sound like anybody else to me. Um, they released this EP, uh, this EP, um, and uh, what was it called? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it had four great hard hitting songs, um, on there. My favorite for sure was I have a problem. That's just such a great song. Um, and then they pull it, they put out a full length and I loved it. Uh, and they've put out a few albums since then. And I haven't been as big of a fan of those albums, but there is a song on their most recent album called after all that is just so good and Allie always picks at me because like I'll I'll just be singing that song just randomly and the way that I sing it I like go into this really high falsetto and uh she just said I sound like a little angel whenever I sing that song so after think, all it's a great song Check that's out. on that's on the Blackbird session EP that one oh okay I forgot that they did that um no this was on the most recent um, I'm looking it up now. The most recent, like full length oh, that they put out. Okay, so I, so the, the song I have a problem is on the is on sick. EP. Sick. sick. That's what yeah. it's called. The okay. sick EP. Yep. Man, in 2013. Yeah, 
Um, Disgusting was the uh, full length. There's some great songs on that as well. Dead is a great song. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, oh, I didn't know they put out another full length album. Anyway, sorry, I am <laughs> rambling. But on Disease, there is a song called After All that is just, that's great. Okay. It's great song. Okay. Um, and obviously, I love the Devil Wears Prada. Um, I have I have been able to see Bear Tooth live. I saw them at Carolina Rebellion one time. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Um, it was around the time that uh, Disgusting came out. So, uh, and then I I <laughs> this is heartbreaking. I was on the way to my very first Warp Tour with my friend Robert, and I had a 1996 Chevrolet Blazer. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I was driving to Charlotte, North Carolina to be able to go to the very, very first warp tour. I'm on the way. The truck runs hot. I'm stranded on the side of the road. Oh yeah. Show, the whole thing started at 12 o'clock. Uh, I'm stranded on the side of the road around like 11, um, kind of getting towards the Charlotte area. Um, and I was stranded on the road for probably about an hour. Um, by the time that I made it into the gates at Warp Tour, mm-hmm. the Devil Wears Prada had already played, and I was so bummed out. And I was mm-hmm. like, my stupid truck running hot has <laughs> caused me like this. One of my favorite bands. This was 2011. This was like prime Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I was so mad. Um, and I have not had the chance to see them since. So thank you so much. For the invitation to go, I'm sorry that we couldn't make it over there. I'm hoping we can get back to going to it some happens. shows. Yeah. We haven't been in one forever. It happens. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I know that well, well, I invited you and Allie to come over, but you have something. You you get up like 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 the book crack at dawn, right? You like like Dude, six, seven, And this will play into you know, my mental health minute later yeah. on. I'll tell you why I've been getting up at the butt crack of dawn. Oh, well, okay. But first, it's fly to the moon and uh, tell everybody what a about transition. That was yeah. really impressive. Yeah, thank so you. Let's fly to the moon. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, obviously, we're talking about Frank Sinatra today. This is very exciting. I told Allie that this is what we were doing, and she was very excited. She loves Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and uh, this is this is such a different, uh, you know, we're we're big we're big rock and metal guys and stuff like that, and we've covered a various you know array of uh, music genres on the show, but we haven't really dove into the whole like jazz and like. You know, the right big right. band era of type yeah. of, you know what I mean? So this is fun. I can't wait. But um, let me tell you guys a little bit about Frank Sinatra before we really dive into the nitty gritty. So Francis Albert Sinatra was an American singer and actor. Uh, he is one of the best selling music artists of all time, having sold an estimated 150 million records worldwide. Uh, Robert Criscow referred to uh, Sinatra as the, quote, greatest singer of the 20th century. His popularity is matched only by Bing Crosby, Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Michael Jackson. Mm. Uh, For Santo Pietro, um, Sinatra was the greatest, um, quote, the greatest male pop singer in the history of America, who amassed, quote, unprecedented power on screen and off. And seem to exemplify the common man, an ethnic 20th century American male who reached the top of the heap, yet never forgot his roots. Santo Petro argues that uh, Sinatra created his own world, which he was able to dominate. Um, His career was centered around power, perfecting the ability to capture an audience. Um, Encyclopedia Britannica referred to Sinatra as often hailed as the greatest American singer of the 20th century popular music um through his life and his art he transcended the status of mere icon to become one of the most recognizable symbols of american culture that's uh, that's all that's all true i mean yeah you can't you can't argue the fact that uh he's he's one of the great probably the greatest singer of all time yeah Man, yeah just so but, many good songs and, oh so and good. even to be Compared to Bing Crosby, Presley, the Beatles, and Jackson, to say a lot about them, about the man. Right. And, 
I mean, it's, it's yeah. nice. So, yeah. You've got you've got the Mount Rushmore of music icons, and that's that's what you're looking at right there. Right. Even yeah. though technically the Beatles could be their own Mount Rushmore because there was four of them, I understand that, but that's not what I'm saying. Right. This is about Frank right now. Yeah. yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so early life. Uh, Francis Albert Sinatra was born on December 12th, 1915 in upstairs tenement at 415 Monroe Street in Aboka, New Jersey. He's a Joyzy guy. Hey, Joyzy. Joy- right there. I'll stab you in the foot. Ouch. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. To all our New Jersey listeners. Uh, the only child of Italian immigrants uh, Natalina, Dolly, uh, I, G- G- Garavita, I believe. Gar- yeah, I believe that's how it's pronounced. And Antonio Martino, Marty for short, Sinatra. Oh, yeah. Sinatra weighed 13.5 pounds, that's 6.1 kilograms at birth, and he had to be delivered with the aid of forceps, Oof. Uh, which caused severe scarring to his left cheek neck and ear and perforated his eardrum Poor uh, guy. Poor his yeah mother. right yeah uh, come on now we can't get forget about the mom you know can't forget about his um, mom uh which um damaged that remained for like his the rest of his life his, his eardrum uh due to his injuries at birth though his, the, his baptism at saint francis church and Hoboken was delayed until April 2nd, uh, 1916. A childhood operation on his mastoid bone left major scarring on his neck, and during adolescence, he suffered from cystic acne that further scarred his face and neck. So Dutcher was raised in the Roman Catholic Church. Man, so it oh. sounds like he had a rough childhood, especially with like uh just some uh just oh, the scarring, it's not, uh, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not like yeah, yeah, he had a rough a, a rough first year. That was yeah, only one mean, year. Yeah, straight, just straight right. Yeah. But like, you know, that's life, right? That's life. That's right? life. You know what I mean? That's life. Yeah, yeah. No, poor guy. I'm sure, like, I'm sure that wasn't easy to deal with. And I'm, no, uh, no. I mean, kids are mean, man. Kids are terrible. Kids are little jerks. No. Uh, and uh, they, I'm sure that he probably got picked on, poor guy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So Sinatra developed an interest in music, particularly uh, big band jazz at a very young age. He listened to Gene Austin, Rudy Valley, uh, Russ Colombo, and Bob Eberly and idolized Bing Crosby. Sinatra's maternal uncle, Domenico, gave him a ukulele for his 15th birthday. If I could reach the ukulele that is currently on the wall, I would be sure to grab it. I'm not going to grab now, it. Now, that's a mandolin behind you, right? Hanging on that that's, wall? Yes, yeah, so here okay. is a... This is a... And again, those of you watching on the YouTube right now, hi, <laughs> smash that like button. Make sure you got the bell turned on for the notifications and obliterate the subscribe yes um so <laughs> this is uh this is all my wife stuff uh, right this is one of Allie's mandolins there's another one over here she has two of them there's a ukulele hanging up over here um here's her les paul and that is her uh little baby taylor um guitar oh, okay. back there so nice. it's a little baby taylor guitar mm-hmm. um so that's how i always call it <laughs> That's how I refer to it. Anyway, so he got this ukulele for his 15th Oh, birthday. my God. <laughs> and yeah. he began performing at family gatherings. Uh, Sinatra attended David E. Rue Jr. High School from 1928 um, and uh, A.J. Demarest High School, since renamed as Hoboken High School, by the way, in 19, 1931, where he arranged bands for school dances. He left without graduating having attended only 47 days before being expelled for general rowdiness. Mm. So we may never know what that means. And it, it wait, wait, this wait. being the thirties. Rowdy. Okay. 
Okay, so rowdy just means um, kind of like a rowdy he guy. Like, he might have been yeah. fighting. But what is general rowdiness? Hmm, mm. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. The world may never know. Um, so to please his mother, he enrolled at Drake Business School, but departed after 11 months. Dolly found Sinatra work as, um, as a, uh, excuse me, as a delivery boy at the Jersey Observer newspaper where his grandfather, Frank Garrick worked. And that, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, and after that, Sinatra was a riveter at the Teach Gin and Lang shipyard. Um, he performed in local Hoboken social clubs, uh, such as the Cat's Meow and the Comedy Club, and sang for free uh, on radio stations such as WAAT What in uh, Jer- in, <laughs> in Jersey City. What? What's the radio? What? The ra- I just feel like that would have been a good like ad they could have uh, right. Right. played every once in a while. You're listening to what? <laughs> um, in New York, Sinatra found jobs singing for his uh, for his supper or for cigarettes, so whatever you can get. Uh, to improve his speech, he began taking uh, elo- elo- elocution lessons for a dollar each from vocal coach John Quinlan, who was one of the first people to notice his very impressive vocal range. Mm. That buttery, smooth voice, man. Mm. Yep. How about it? I do like the like the club cats meow. That's cool. The cats I figured, meow. I figured me when when you and I get really big, we can create a club called the Dogs Rough. The dog, it'd be rough up in the dog house. That's right. The oh, dog wait, have you rough. Ever seen cats. I have actually. I have, have the movie. I I've, I've seen the play. Okay. The actual live action. I want yeah. to see. I want to see the musical. It's amazing. Yeah, I the thought movie. back when I was like 14, 16 years old. Okay, it's I cool. would love to go see the actual musical. Yeah, My friend Ann said yeah. that it's a great musical, um, and she said it, that I would love it. We tried to watch the movie. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, and we couldn't finish it. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. cut it off. Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I don't know yeah. what it feel like, what it feels like to like drop acid, Ta- but I think that this is probably as close as I can get. Wasn't Taylor Swift in that movie? That's Taylor like, Swift is cat. in the movie. Yeah. Taylor Swift, Jennifer Hudson, um, all these big names, Rebel Wilson, yeah, uh, yeah. Idris Elba is in it, uh, yeah. and I love Idris Elba, but I was yeah. like, dude, yeah. why did you stoop this low? Well, anyway, when you talks right, money does talk james uh, cox that is absolutely true so i guess if they wanted me to be in the cats movie i would have said sign me up i'm allergic but sign me up i am too you're allergic to cats yeah for, for real wow. i get like i get like big whips on their eyes it's, it's horrible and i and, and i do know i just sniff. yeah dude i had no idea look at us connecting i, I got that from my uncle greg he's really uh, yeah, he was allergic to cats. Way I back. If I got it from before. Uncle Greg too. Maybe I don't Maybe. know. Yeah, it could be a. a yeah, we could be like like you know little real distant, real uh, distant brothers, real you know, or something. You could brothers, be. you know, it could be. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Thanks, Uncle Greg. <laughs> right, right. You um, haven't got me a birthday present like ever, or a Christmas present, and you. The only thing you passed down to me was your allergy to cats. Well, that's your gift whatever well, i'm not i'm not even going to continue this conversation right now. that's right so radio exposure brought him frank sinatra to the attention of band leader harry james with whom sinatra made his first recording including all or nothing at all in 1984 no 1940 sorry that would have been cool yeah i know right so 1940 way back when Back in the time zone. Way back yonder. Yep. Tommy Dorsey invited Sinatra to join his band, though. After two years of chart topping success with Dorsey, Sinatra decided to strike it on his own. And thank God he did. Ooh, yeah. So between 1943 and 1946, uh, Sinatra's solo career 
blossomed as the singer charted the slew of hit singles. The mobs of Bobby Foxer fans, so not tr- attracted with his dreamy baritone, earned him such nicknames as The Voice and The Son of Swoon. S W O O N. Swoon, baby. Swoon, that's a word I've never really hear about. So, yeah. Good word. Swoon. It, quote, it was the war years, and there was a great loneliness, end quote. We call it Sinatra, who was the unit who was unfit for military services due to his punctured eardrums. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, apparently you, they can't, they won't hire you if you have some kind of disability. I mean, I can do this all day, you know, mm-hmm. but I don't know, you know. So, but I guess it would be beneficial for, well, no. No, I no no ne- never mind. Uh, <laughs> I was like like they could like send, you know, send people to the enemy and take them. Uh, I, okay, back off subject. I'm sorry. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, quotations, he says, uh, "I was the boy in every corner drugstore who got off drafted to the war. That was all." End quote. Man, poor dude. Oh. You know, he just wanted to. Uh, I, I I have this visual of him, like you remember in Captain America, the first Captain America movie. And yeah, he wait, just tried yeah. like so bad. He wanted to like join the war effort, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, had like a, a like a true heart to want to serve his country, right? Right. And uh, you know, he wanted to uh, he wanted to make it. He just the poor guy couldn't do it. It took the the it took the the super soldier serum, right? Uh, serum serum syrup, super well, soldier. Why have they not invented super soldier syrup? That is a perfect marketing uh, campaign for Marvel Studios, and they haven't done it yet. They can even mean, make it blue. Hmm. They're gonna steal my idea. I shouldn't have said that on the on a podcast. What am I doing? I can edit it out. Yeah. We're going to have to edit that out because I, I mean, swear if Marvel I mean, Studios gets a hold of that, I'm going to be so pissed. Yeah. yeah. I'll be interested from when words fill music speaks podcast. Super, Blue super, super, super soldier syrup on yeah. your pancakes and waffles. Yeah. And it'll be blue. Blue. Yeah. Okay. Just don't put it into your, just don't in, inject it into your veins. No. I no. Would, I'd highly advise against that. It won't make you a super get that endorsement from Blake or James. Or, right. Yeah. But who knows? Um, so uh, Sinatra made his movie acting debut uh, in 1943. But yeah, I mean, so not only do we have this Frank Sinatra character as being one of the most uh, iconic voices and uh, greatest entertainers of all time. Uh, as it just in music, but he was also a great actor and, and definitely uh, was in tons of films. So Sinatra made his movie acting debut in 1943 with the films uh, Reveal, uh, Revel, 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 Revelli, Revelli, R-E-V, yeah, Revelli. Is that it? Yeah, yeah I got the so. film. Sure. Revelli, Revelli with Beverly. With Beverly and higher and higher. Uh, in 1945, he won a special Academy Award for The House I Live In, a 10-minute short made to promote uh, racial and religious tolerance on the home front. Uh, Sinatra's popularity began to slide in the, po- the post-war years, however, leading to a loss of his recording and film contracts in the early 1950s. But in 1953, he made a triumphant comeback winning an Oscar for supporting actor for his portrayal of the Italian American soldier Maggio uh, in the classic from here to eternity. Although this was his first non singing role, uh, Sinatra quickly found a new vocal outlet when he received a recording contract with Capitol records in the same year, the Sinatra of the 1950s brought a brought forth a more mature sound with jazzier inflections in his voice. Having regained stardom, Sinatra enjoyed uh, continued success in both movies and music for years to come. He received another Academy Award nomination 
uh, for his work in The Man with the Golden Arm in 1955 and earned critical acclaim for his performance in the original version of The Manchurian Candidate. Um, Meanwhile, he continued to be a formidable chart presence. With his record sales beginning to dip by the end of the 1950s, Sinatra left Capitol to establish his own record label, Reprise Records. Isn't that crazy? I didn't know that. Uh, In association with Warner Brothers, which later bought Reprise, um, Sinatra also set up his own independent film um, company, Artanis. Uh, If you're not familiar with Reprise Records, uh, they have done, oh my gosh, we could sit here and talk for hours of some of the classics that Reprise has put out. Um, I would say probably the most notable. Um, They worked with My Chemical Romance a lot um and green day had a a contract with them for a long time um and it was reprise records that put out the classic american idiot oh okay yeah Yeah. awesome yes so let's talk about the rat pack Um, talk about the rat pack dude got to talk about about the rat pack so i remember some nitro course got sammy james jr and you got dean martin I can never remember the fourth guy. Was there a fourth guy? <laughs> yes, sir. So at we'll last, come up to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by the mid 1960s, uh, Sinatra was back on top again. He received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award and headlined in the 1965 Newport Jazz Festival with Count. A, by Basies? Basies oh, Orchestra. Yeah, yeah B, B-A-S-I-E mm-hmm. Orchestra. Um, the period also marked his Las Vegas de- de- debut where he continued on for four years as the main attraction at Caesar's Palace. As a founding okay. member of the Rat Pack alongside Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. Uh, Sondatra came to epitomize the hard-drinking, womanizing, gambling swinger, and image consistently reinforced by popular press and Sinatra's own albums. What? With right, <laughs> big, big time, big, bad, yeah. deal, bad idea then. Um, with his modern edge, a timeless class, even radical youth of the day he had paid Sinatra his due. As Jim Morrison on of the doors once said, nothing, no one can touch him. Yeah. Is, you know, I yeah. mean, that, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the Rat Pack made several films during the heyday. Uh, the famed Ocean's Eleven. 1916, which is remade. Uh, yeah, the OG. Clue, right, yeah, yeah. So, Sergeant's Tree in 1962, for for Texas in 1963, and Robin Hood and the Seven and Robin and, and the Seven Hoods in 1964. Yeah, a lot of numbers involved there. Right, a lot of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the world of music, though. Uh, Sinatra had a big hit in uh, 1966. What are you smiling about? It's almost, it's almost like Sesame Street was the one that put those movies out. Ocean's Eleven, Sergeant's Three, Four for Texas, Robin and the Seven Hoods. That's how I learned how to count was rapid. With, with the count. One. one. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Two. <laughs> you do it better than that I can. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. Back, yeah, back, back in the world of music, though. Uh, so that's had a big hit in 1966 with the Billboard number one track, "Strangers in the Night." That's a good song. Mm-hmm. Of course. Which won a Grammy for Record of the Year. He also recorded the duet "Something Stupid" with his daughter Nancy Sinatra. Who previously made waves at, with the feminist anthem? These boots are made for walking. And that's, and that's just what do. do. You know the song that, that, that was oh, covered. Yeah. That was I was uh, covered by Megadeth. 
Yeah, uh, Megadeth, so Death, Willie Nelson, Jessica Simpson. Anybody and everybody could yeah. cover it. So um the two reached number one for four weeks with something stupid in spring of nineteen sixty seven. Sorry. By the end of the decade though, Sinatra had added another signature song to his um re- repertory my way. Yeah. Yes. Which, uh... was, which was adapted from a French tune and featured new lyrics by Paul Anka. Paul Anka. Yeah. That's also the name of the dog from Gilmore Girls. It's Paul Anka. <laughs> that name sounds so familiar. It's a funny hey, you need to watch Paul um I mean uh yeah you do need to watch Paul Anka. Uh, you need to watch out for Paul Anka if you know what I'm saying. Um, he's just, no, I'm just kidding. He's a very trustworthy fella. I'm sorry. No, but in Gilmore Girls, there's a, uh, they have a dog and they named him Paul Anka. And I don't know why, but I always thought that that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, man, Rat Pack. Uh, it, you can't, you can't talk about Sinatra without talking about Sammy Davis uh, Jr. and uh, Dean Martin. Which obviously is the trio that I always envision, but yeah, there was there was more involved, but it, right. those are the three that I always see. Just what okay, a cool, so cool group of guys. So the reason why I have heard of him because he's an actor too, Paul Paul Inca. Mm. He uh, did uh, the uh, Three Thousand Miles of Graceland, which was an Elvis movie. Yeah, um, Captain Ron. Yeah, he's been in tons of that's 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 how I know him is because he's, yeah. he's actor Paul Inca. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after a brief retirement in the uh, the early 1970s, Sinatra returned to the music scene with the album "Old Blue Eyes" is back in 1973, uh, and also became more politically active, having first visited the White House in 1944 while campaigning with Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, in his bid for a fourth term in office. Sinatra worked eagerly for John F. Kennedy's election in 1960 and later supervised JFK's inaugural gala uh, in Washington. Uh, the relationship between the two soured, though, uh, after, um, however, and uh, after the president canceled a weekend visit to Sinatra's house due to the singer's connections to Chicago mob boss Sam Giacana. We're going to come back to that. Um, I got a whole section of... <laughs> Frank Sinatra and the mob. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that. So, by the 1970s, Sinatra had abandoned his long held Democratic loyalties and embraced the Republican Party, supporting first uh, Richard Nixon and later close friend Ronald Reagan, who presented Sinatra with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, uh, the nation's highest civilian award in 1985. Oh, Ronald Reagan. Old Reagan. The actor. Big time actor. <laughs> Big Time for Vibes, though. That's a good movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. In 1987, author Kitty Kelly published an unauthorized biography of Sinatra, accusing the singer of relying on mob ties to build his career. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Such claims failed, though, to diminish Sinatra's widespread popularity. In, 90, in 1993, at the age of 77, he gained legions of new, younger fans with the release of Duets, a collection of 13 Sinatra standards that he re-recorded, though, featuring likes of Barbara Streisand, Bono, Tony Bennett, and Aretha Franklin. With, well, while the album was a major hit, though, some critics uh, assailed as I don't know that word assailed assailed the quality of the project as Sinatra has recorded his vocals well before the his collaborators clever, cl- collaborators speak James laid down their tracks. That's that's so, a load of malarkey. I mean, I mean, yes, probably, but I mean, come on, dude. Yeah. It's still I mean, it a cool happens. collaboration. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, you know, this was this was around. This, this is uh, this is ninety three, so it's it's not like now where we do all kind of yeah, we do all kind of 
collaborations on the internet and everybody has pro tools on their computer. It seems well, like right now it's, days, you not, nowadays is more accepted because in internet, yeah. right? Because of the internet, right? right. It's just yeah. the, the age and, and uh, that, that yeah. they were currently yeah. in. That's, that's yes, the there's some times, you know, criticism. I think it's and, crap. and when you're seven to seven years old, you kind of lose your, your voice kind of, sort of, uh, you know, yeah. uh, it I'm sure he wasn't done. singing exactly the same. No. Sure. Oh, so of course they were. They were recorded before, you know, Streisand, Bono, and Bennett could, you know, yeah, add on to those. Three. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's just weird, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's finally here. We're finally going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Frank Sinatra and the Mob. Set the mood, just set the mood, you know. Perfect. So Satra, uh, Satra, Sinatra became the stereotype of the tough working class Italian American, something which he embraced. He commented that he would probably have ended in a life of crime if it had not been for his interest in music. According to one writer, Eddie Fisher once remarked that Sinatra wanted to be a hood and had told him, had once told him that I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather be a Don of the mafia than president of the United States. However, Peter Lawford had said that Sinatra only referred to them as the boys or the outfit rather than the mafia. In Sinatra's early days, mafia boss, William, Willie Moretti, helped him uh, for kickbacks and was reported to have intervened in releasing him from the contract with Tommy Dorsey. Sinatra was present at the Mafia Havana Conference, uh, Havana Conference, excuse me, in 1946, and the newspaper published the headline, Shame Sinatra, regarding his connection with Lucky Luciano. Kelly claims that Phyllis McGuire referred to Sam Giacana and Sinatra as the best of friends, saying that they would often play golf together in Nevada and visit each other. As I go on, my uh, mob yeah. voice kind of... Really I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She also quotes Joe Carroll Silvers, saying that both Sinatra and her husband, Phil Silvers, adored Bugsy Siegel so much. See, Bugsy Siegel, excuse me, so much and would boast to friends about him and how many people he would have killed. She also claimed that Silvers told her that, like Bugsy, Frank had a mafia redneck mentality with their shared love of high living and grandiose plans in Las Vegas. <laughs> Kelly Clinton, sorry, this is the Goodfellas soundtrack. Okay. All right, there we go, perfect. Uh, Kelly claims that Sinatra and mobster Joseph Fischetti had been good friends from the 1938 onward, from, from 1938 onward, and acted like Sicilian brothers. She also states that Sinatra and Hanks uh, Sanicola were financial partners in the gossip magazine Hollywood Nightlife with Mickey Cohen a West Coast mobster. She claims that Sinatra funded a hundred, uh, excuse me, $15,000 into the magazine to get back at Hollywood. The FBI kept records amounting to 2,403 pages of Sinatra becoming a natural target with his alleged mafia ties, his ardent new deal politics and his friendship with John F. Kennedy. They kept him under the surveillance for almost five decades, beginning in the 1940s. The documents include accounts of Sinatra as the target of death threats and extortion schemes. The FBI commented that Sinatra was losing esteem with the mafia as he grew closer to President Kennedy, whose brother Bobby was leading a crackdown on organized crime. They wiretapped Giacano's conversations and found that Giacano no longer trusted Sinatra, after he had been spotted with Kennedy. Their purported 
friendship finally came to an end in 1963 following the Nevada Gaming Commission's investigation into the casinos. According to Kelly, Giacano blamed Sinatra for the ordeal. However, it was acknowledged that Sinatra and Kennedy's friendship started becoming strained after Kennedy took office, in part because the Kennedy administration, which included Bobby Kennedy as Attorney General, was very anti-mafia. It was also acknowledged that their friendship also came to an end in 1962 after Sinatra's recent meeting with the mobster Sam Giacano convinced Kennedy could, to cancel a visit to Sinatra's home while he visited Palm Springs' home and uh, instead stayed at home at the ho- excuse me stayed at the home of Bing Crosby, who was more willing to distance himself from the mafia in public, despite also having mob ties. The FBI's secret dossi- dossier of Sinatra was released in 1998 in response to the Freedom of Information Act requests. Sinatra frequently denied personal and professional links with organized crime figures such as Bugsy Siegel, Carlo Gambino, Sam Giacana, Lucky Luciano, and Joseph Fischetti, despite the many connections and anecdotes reported. He vehemently, sure, vehemently declared that any report that I frat, uh, fraternized with goons or racketeers is a vicious lie. And in January 1967, he stood before a Las Vegas grand jury investigating mobster influence in the casinos and denied any final, excuse me, financial exploits with Giacana. It's going to take me a while to come back down from this here, uh, Italian accent and the mob accent that I got going on right now, but by golly, I'm gonna do it. Sorry. So, um, so that's uh, that's a good read. Um, uh, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. You, uh, it's so, Sinatra had mob with has ties with the mob, I guess. Most definitely had ties with the mob. Yeah, you could tell that he did. Come on. Am I saying that the guy broke some kneecaps? I'm not saying that at all. Probably because the mob is listening in to this podcast as we speak, and mm. they're going to come break my kneecaps if I say anything. Mm. So I'm going to stay out of it, and I'm just going to say that my uh, my Italian mob accent that I was throwing in there um, was not meant to be disrespectful in any manner. Um, I just recently got done playing LA Noir and I've still got that kind of oh my in my God, system. So it's such a great game. game. And uh yeah. It felt it was or, very fitting. Or the mob will come stab you in the foot, like you they said. Probably, on I'm gonna foot. come over here and stab you in the foot. What do you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That was a good read. Good read. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. I just thought it was necessary to talk about Frank Sinatra's ties to the mob. Before we go on, um, I think it was during one of the, his, his Grammy Awards that he got cut off during his speech. Do we know exactly what he said with that? Because I'm not, because I remember that the the audience, the, the TV audience, didn't hear what his fast what is. Was he telling uh, Chris Rock to keep his wife's name out of his? <laughs> Mouth. No, I he was saying something, but but see, this was a back, back. I'll look that up. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll look that up. When you read the when you when you read the next part, I'll look. Yeah. In, I'll see what okay. that's all about. All right. So it's the Grammys. I I think it was the Grammys. Yeah. Um. um t- type in like Sinatra didn't finish his thoughts on Grammy. Something will pull up. I bet we'll so. see what we can find on that. In the meantime, let's uh, let's talk about his uh, tragic death. Well, I don't know if it's tragic or not, so let's find out together. Okay. So Dr. performed in concert for the very last time in 1995 at the Palm Desert Marriott Ballroom in California. On May 14th, 1990, Sinatra died of a heart attack in, at Los Angeles Cedars Sinai Medical Center. He was 82 years old and had, at last, faced his final curtain call. Uh, with a show business career that spanned more than 50 years, 
Sinatra continued mass appeal that can be best explained in the man's own words. Quote, when I sing, I believe. I'm honest. End quote. In 2010, the well-received biography, Frank, the voice was what Frank the Voice, that was the that was the biography name, um, was published by Doubleday and penned by James Kaplan. The writer released a sequel to the volume in 2015, Sinatra the Chairman, what's it called? Marking in the musical icon centennial year. So, I got it. Okay. I found it. Nice. All right. So, what happened with Frank Sinatra and the Grammys in 1994? uh, He had received a very lengthy standing ovation. Right. uh, And then when he got up on stage, uh, basically, he just wouldn't stop talking. (laughs) He kept, he gave this crazy long speech, and the uh, network company was like, we have to go to commercial break, bam, and cut him off um, just because he wouldn't stop. So mm. can you blame the guy, though? Right. You've done all this great stuff over the years, and you've, you've received this standing ovation. Maybe you got some uh, some thank yous and some props you want to yeah. put out there for uh, yeah. you know someone. But, yeah, he just wouldn't stop talking. And uh, was it ABC, CBS? Oh, yeah, some kind of- uh, CB- CBS, that's who it was. Yeah. Uh, they had to get their commercial breaks because that's how they paid the bills. And if we had sponsors and you want to sponsor this podcast, hit us up so that we can pay said bills as well. Right. We'd love to well, uh, have some sponsors here. Yes, we do. We honestly yeah. do. But when you're as, like, when you're as, um, I guess, noteworthy as Sinatra, yeah. I feel the need that they should have given them. A lot more time than they did. Sure. I mean, because think about it, Frank. You're Frank Sinatra, and you won a Grammy. Yeah. Why not let him talk? What's What's yeah. a few? Let him talk. I'm sure. The, I'm sure the networks can a few can a, can afford not going to commercial one time. Yeah. One now. Yeah, they oh. they probably should have just done like a. A, a special for Frank Sinatra and just yeah. give, give that a little bit more time and like, a, a, you know, and you a lot for enough time, I guess, because it was just unexpected and uh, they probably didn't plan on that. It's probably what they probably do whenever people go to these award shows is they're like, Hey, this is going to happen. We're going to announce the nominees. We're going to announce the winner. You've got mm-hmm. about 30 seconds to a minute to do yeah. your thank yous and, you know, and get it out there because we have to roll into the next thing. We've got commercial breaks or whatever. Yeah. So if you get up there and speak for about five minutes, they're probably like the producers are probably like, oh, come yeah. on. Well, see, I also, I also didn't think that they plan on him having such a, a long probably standing not. ovation. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're so it was a link. Right. Yeah. And you could probably watch the, uh, I think it said that it, the video is on YouTube. You can go back and watch it and see how long it right. was. So, yeah. um, but I didn't know about that. So, you're Frank Sinatra. That's the, I, 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 okay. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> on to the, yeah, you're Frank Sinatra, CBS. Come on. Yeah. You know, you dummies. I'm sorry, but it's, yeah. So, <laughs> We'll never know what he what he said still to this day, which is yeah. working me to death. But uh, yeah. Uh, so if you enjoyed this episode with his janky mafia voice, I guess it's janky. I'm not sure, but that was better than mine. It's janky. Yeah, uh, that was better. Than, I'm sorry. I I got kind insulted of instead of what's janky. It's not janky. Mine, I'm insulted. Mine's janky. Oh no. <laughs> Just twist I'll, that knife just a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I'll buy you some YouTube more on the show. How about that? Hey, make it up for it. Make it up. Um, if you like this episode, I hope it gives you um, stress. Your stress has been re- released. I guess you know 
sure. You don't have the inspiration because when you talk about music and think about music, it it um yeah it does wonderful wonderful things for your mind. And uh, yeah. if you have the um if you need a, a minute to hear Blake's health minute health mental health minute, here you go. Here we go. So. Um, today's mental health minute is one that I actually came up with on my own because this is something that I have started doing recently and I think it has helped. So as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I've been stressed out beyond belief um, that that amount of stress can definitely play into your mental health for sure. Um, and it can really wear on you and take uh, take its toll. So one thing that I've started doing, I... It, we're all guilty of this. There's a lot of people out there that wake up at the last minute before they start their day. And what does that do? But creates nothing but stress from the second your feet hit the floor. Right? So I got tired of doing that. Um, my hours recently changed at work. I now go into work at eight o'clock, but I was used to getting up at a little after five because I had to be work. Uh, at seven previously. So I decided let's go ahead and let's keep getting up around five o'clock. We've been going for walks around the neighborhood, get a good little brisk 20 minute walk. That's about a mile uh, around our neighborhood. A little bit of exercise first thing in the morning helps clear my head a little bit. Um, and, uh, and then we've been, you know, getting back. So it's around, it's shortly before six o'clock. I still got a lot of time before I need to be at work. I got a whole two hours before I need to be there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have been getting back uh, into reading. I am currently reading um, uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Um, it's a really, really good book, but I've been trying to read it for like six months now, and I'm just a slow reader, and I never have time for it. I'm making time for it now. Mm. So doing a little bit, of, I'm getting just getting up earlier, just clearing my head with a nice little walk. I'm reading a little bit before work. Allie recently got me a uh, a uh, Kindle. So I have been um, reading some comic books as well. Uh, and uh, so that's fun. I'm a big Star Wars fan, obviously. Uh, so I'm reading some Darth Vader comics and stuff right now. Um, that's fun. It's setting time aside. I need at least... I need at least 20 minutes of Blake time today. Even if that's all I can get, just like something that I want to do that is uh, that is Blake oriented, something Blake enjoys, whether it's playing video games or reading or whatever, doing the podcast, it's important. And it's if it's important to me, I know it'll be important to you guys. So think about that. Get up a little bit earlier, go for a walk. Even if you don't feel like exercising, just take the time to turn, just like sit in silence if you have to and relieve some of that stress uh, before it even starts, right? And I'm telling you, it has helped me tremendously. Mm. And I've been a lot happier recently. I've been a lot happier at work uh, since I've been doing this. And I'm telling you, I am more stressed out at work than I ever have been the whole six and a half years that I've been working there. Wow. And I think uh, I think this has been really beneficial for me. So I just want to say that's something that I just wanted to throw in there. That wasn't from an article where it's written by professional therapists or uh, psychologists or anything like that. That's just Blake being 100% real with you. And I think you'll enjoy it. That's a good idea that you said that because I do that too. Because what I do is I get up and at least, well, I get up at 830. Yeah. I go to my coffee maker, make me some sweet coffee with bones. Yes. Yes. Bones are best. Please sponsor us. I need to order some more bones. So I do too. I'm yes. just about out. I am tragically though. I'm I'm just on the I'm I'm just on the cinnamon sin e bun S I N. I'll see what yeah. there. But but yeah, um I make my coffee, go in on my chair, um, watch a few of Seinfeld TV shows. Yeah. And I'm set to go for that day. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you could play it out on your base. If you had to, you have a base? No, I don't. Um, no. I would like one. There you I go. I feel like my fingers are built more for playing bass rather than playing guitar. Yeah, because it's fingers, yeah, four, four as opposed to six. Yeah, yeah six. A little bit better. 
and bigger strings doesn't hurt my fingers. I might be able to play the bass. I keep hitting the cable. Really sorry. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, because um, yes, you're right. Because you need to reset your mind for the day for that day from yesterday, and that's a good right. idea. That's a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you guys will uh, take that into uh, consideration at least, and um, I hope it uh, I hope it helps you guys. So, mm-hmm. um, before we wrap up today's episode, we just want to give a special shout out. Uh, we have been working with a company um, to have a new logo designed, um, and we have seen the pro- final product. James, do you have that available? that we can share on the screen for our YouTube. I do. Just give me just okay. a minute here. Absolutely. I can sit here and I can drag this out for a, a, a little bit here. But no, um, I came across a company called One Up Graphics um, and reached out to them and told them that we had this podcast and you know we're interested in working with them. Um, and they you know, kind of took some ideas that we threw at them and – they want to make sure you're satisfied with the, with the uh, outcome as well. So um, we definitely went back and forth on a few things and they finally uh, got it, uh, got it laid out for us. So for those of you who are watching the YouTube channel right now, hi, um, uh, this is it. This is our new logo right here. Uh, when words film music speaks podcast designed by one up graphics, you can uh, go to our um, click the link in our website to the uh, T public store and uh you can get this new logo that we've got on a plethora of color options there um pretty sweet man i'm gonna order me one uh pretty soon you know i you know i love my black tees so i'm gonna have to go that route this is me and james right here james is on the uh the guitar and i am on the drums and it looks like i have a little bit of some frosted tips in my hair at one point in time i actually had that Thanks. Nice. So he scored <laughs> without even knowing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Thanks a lot, One Up Graphics. If you want to, um, it, you know, it, he does a lot of uh, like Twitch, uh, emotes, and uh, he does um animated intros for YouTube channels and just different logo designs and stuff. The guy has a whole like cool like package deal, and uh, just go follow him on uh, Instagram. It's at One Up Graphics. Check him out. When I showed my friend that 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 logo, yeah, is y'all are not a band. I'm like one of it. You can be. <laughs> yeah, you don't know anything about us, dude. Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't know yeah. jack nothing about our you know about our band. So we need to come up with a band name. So maybe we'll come up you know, with one. Maybe I can play guitar we'll and do you that, can... and we'll show the world. There you go. They said we weren't a band. Whatever, yeah. dude. I know, right? Yeah. So, so. There are a few ways to stay up to date with us, including, but I'm not limited to. Blake, you want to go? That's me. That's you. you can follow us <laughs> on uh, all of our socials. Uh, so uh, when we're, you can follow us on Instagram. It's at When Words Fail uh, Podcast. Facebook is at WWFMS Podcast. We're also on Twitter. When we're at When Words Fail MS. And we're on the TikTok. Uh, it's at when words fail, music speaks. And be sure you go to Blake's TikTok and give him a like and a follow because he did the My Hero. New video dropped today. New, New video TikTok dropped today. today. And I'm going to watch it when I get, get off here. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, without but you, uh, the audience can send our ideas or personal stories if you have a music story that has helped you. To when words fail podcast at gmail.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, like you're watching right now. If you're on the uh, on the YouTubes, uh, you can watch some interviews that we've done. You can watch some music video reactions. Watch some vinyl showcases that James has done, and one day I will get to do, um, and much much more. Um, our YouTube is YouTube.com/slash when words fail music speaks. Go check it out. Hit that subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and uh, get get alerts every time a new smash video. Smash that like button. Yeah. Smash. 
go in there and obliterate the smash. <laughs> Sorry. Um, That's how they always talk. Everybody's like, make sure you go in there and you just get, uh, absolutely <laughs> annihilate. <laughs> right yeah so like, i do I, look, you can subscribe if you want to i it's okay yeah it's if, yeah it's what or, if you don't but or just yeah. watch the video and like, I, we, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. But i'll tell you that that there's going to be three more videos uh, released after this podcast so yeah. it's, it's up on our youtube channel right now to so go to it right now yeah we have a few uh interviews um, and a few episodes that from the past that we uh, got up there right now. So yeah. Uh, for all of the links, uh, you can find uh, find more about us, or to buy some of our merchandise as our new logo has launched. It's a nerd with fight when words fail, music speaks. Dot com. Yes, and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Blake underscore Mosley. I am also on YouTube. I dropped three new videos this weekend uh, from Easter Sunday, Easter's, uh, where I played uh, uh, when I played at church. So, um, including the the My Hero um, drum part that I threw in there. So, my YouTube is youtube.com slash Mosley with three Y's, M O S E L E Y Y Y. I'm also on TikTok, as James said before. Uh, you can check out the new one that I posted today. Uh, it's at Blake Brosley. And if you don't mind checking out my other podcast, it's called South Carolina Spook Show. I've got a new episode in the works. Um, it has been edited. I just got to put the final touches on it, um, and it will be coming out very soon. It is available. It's called South Carolina Spook Show. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and so much more. Uh, sources from this episode come from biography.com, Wikipedia, and NPR.org. We do not own any of the music used in this episode. No copyright infringement is intended. Please don't come break my kneecaps. They're very delicate. Or don't stab his foot, y'all. Don't stab me in the foot, a guy would right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, listening and I'm watching on YouTube. For it at this point, sorry, everybody. <laughs> You're just yeah. Mm. Wonder who is gonna actually no no. Nobody can. Nobody. But I mean, Shit, uh, the 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 blinds are open. They're probably watching me like right now, just they're like probably, waiting. They're probably yeah. waiting for you to go outside. I do have to let Lucy out here soon, so uh, yeah, that's probably you. when they're going to do it. She can protect you, no? She probably wouldn't. She'd probably okay. just stand there and be like all excited and be like, oh, "Let's play." <laughs> yeah. So, thanks What's everybody up? once again for listening, and always remember. When words fail, music speaks. Hey, that music speaks, guy. Come on. Come okay. on. Okay, that's uh, enough. That's, that's enough. enough, Blake. Stop. <laughs>